Um, I just want to talk to these people all the time. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. I really could. I really could talk about anything with them. We're going to talk about Salt Lake today and a bunch of other things, but this is the third time they've been here. They are like my favorite duo and individually they're awesome as well. Together they're awesome. Every which way they are awesome. You know them from their podcast, Dumb Gay Politics, which I think I'm going to be on in this next week. So I will be hitting you up to go listen to that because I cannot wait to rage against the machine about certain political things happening right now. But you also know them from Bravo because of the people's cast. Uh, they're insanely good on Heather McDonald, Jeff Lewis. I mean, they're just the best people ever. Uh, not to blow you guys up too much. Uh, we'll other people's and- shit <laughs> with us, Ryan, just ours. <laughs> Here, well, Heather McDonald's uh, podcast. She has enough <laughs> listeners. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, Julie Goldman, Brandy <laughs> Howard, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank we you. Love, we love talking to you too. I the obligate, I love talking with you. Yeah. As well. <laughs> One of your fans came up to me at BravoCon at a Tom Sandoval show, and they had your T-shirt on, and they were like, "You're from their podcast," and like it was such an intense line for drinks that I was in line with them for like her for like 25 minutes, <laughs> and I, I mean, so much it was like text, hey, text Brandy right now, text Brandy right now. I was like, okay, and I and then. And then it was like so long. And then I was like, then she was like, oh, you're, and then it came out that she was like, also like, yo, it's so cool. You're gay. And, and you're like, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gay, but like, thank you so much for saying that. And we're like, <laughs> it just, like, it was like, uh, she was oh. really excited. And then I think I disappointed her with the, I'm not gay thing. And I was like, but I could be gay. I totally, I, I want, I want to, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. She was like, ew, gross. I've been in line with this like story. <laughs> Guy, know, this, 20 minutes. this guy won't leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> i love that you took a picture i was like we only have 14 listeners so the fact that one of them wore our shirt to BravoCon, like really slow clap for her i forget her name because you texted her name right because you yeah, said i texted you yeah 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 and, i sent I, the whole uh, all the information i was so drunk i think when i got that i'm glad you reminded me we have we, well, our 14 listeners they're 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 strong that's the one good thing about about it no mm-hmm. i mean they she was canvassing the area she yeah. was looking for other brandy and julie heads you know and she didn't find any yeah it was just her yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, what how are you guys show? doing in 2023 what kind of what's going on what kind of show is tom sandoval doing i must know i mean it's the it's it's like all like kind of like 80s covers 90s covers and he has like a 10 piece band oh so it's like God. full like sax saxophone like everything like he has a full like orchestra section so i mean i would like there's a there's a certain funny aspect to it but then they're actually really good musicians and they do way better than you would expect them to so all around like i just think it's a really fun time but i got so hammered that night i got my bag stolen with all my equipment in it and my wallet and imagine getting stuff stolen at a tom sandoval show i mean honestly Uh, even at bravo con at all like, like I, oh, God, what a nightmare. So oh, were you in a total shame spiral after that. Oh, I, I realized after at like two in the morning, I had to go back to the Manhattan Center and you want to see something embarrassing going back into the room that you were like totally partying your balls off and be like almost in tears. Like, have you seen a bag with can't with recording oh, equipment? Like, God. and oh, it was just it was why you, I, I, I flew too close to the sun. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Did you go to a self-imposed rehab after that for like two weeks? Uh, well, after the, well, the next two days I kept going, I was like, yeah. it's time to just <laughs> keep going. And then you'll be ashamed for the next couple yeah. months after this. So I just kept going. And the sad thing is with being me, everybody was just like, Oh, that checks out. That seems like something <laughs> that would happen to you. Even my mom was like, Oh, you did that again. Like that happened. Like, Oh man, you just have bad luck. I mean, your wallet Oh, yeah. This is the phone. Yeah. I mean, the, no, sad, yeah. the sad thing is that the phone's really the, the one thing that you don't want stolen. That's true. You can get everything back available. <laughs> oh, the phone yeah. is the biggest nightmare. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. Well, I, would, I would do something like that too. Like, leave, I leave my shit everywhere. I'd like forget things. And if I'm drinking or what, I would just, I feel you so hard. And then it's just so yeah, horrendous. And then my Marita, who works with me, she's there and she's all disappointed. I can tell she's bummed out for me and also sad, like, and also kind of worried for me. Like, oh, this seems to happen to you a lot. Yeah. So that's the whole, that's the, 
I try to explain that to the audience. That's the shitty part about getting older is that like you keep making the same mistakes. And so you're like just tired of yourself. You're like, oh, God, uh, again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> you think you make changes and then all of a sudden you have left your wallet again on the hood of the car and drove away with it. <laughs> but, you're holding coffee. but you're holding your coffee <laughs> or you drove away with the, coffee <laughs> of the car. Yeah. And you drive it, you, or you, or you, or you back into your own Vespa. Or you're so drunk last <laughs> night when you're carrying the, the bottle of Vuv oh. it's, that's open that you took from the party. Cause you can't <laughs> leave the booth behind. Um, and it slips right out of your arm and I'm um, shattered yeah. across the driveway. And mm -hmm. then there's goes the hundred dollar bottle of champagne. Right. right. What party are they allowing you to take open bottles of boo? What party? It was, is a home, it was Leah as at Leah Black's house. It was a home party. Oh, Leah. OK, now it checks out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so many was, times was... I've left her house with the champagne, like in the car and like drinking it, like on our way somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's shattered. Uh, on by the way, Leah's going to be on this season of Miami for like a guest appearance she showed up in the the trailer and this season of miami yeah. i know i've talked about it so much it's so good and i'm so excited to see her back for whatever in whatever capacity she apparently at bravo con when they played the miami like the trailer for the upcoming season when it showed leah everybody like clapped and screamed in the audience oh i was in i was there that was me oh. I, yeah, yeah, I, well. it was the only thing that brought me back from losing my wallet and all that stuff it was like the sunday and i was like yeah <laughs> you should have her on. She'll totally come on. You've had her on before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've had her on once. In fact, I'm pissed. I wanted to go. Now I should have gone to that party. Like I need to get in with the cool people. <laughs> yeah, I want to be like stealing bottles of boob and like dropping them places. I could totally wreck her house completely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. You should come with us. It's fun. You know, it's fun. Uh, um, it is, you don't even just steal it. She just gives it to you. Yeah. That's the great thing about Leah. She'll just hand you a bottle of something before you leave. Here, take this with you. You're like, ah, okay. Everybody says she is the funnest person to hang out with. Like legitimately a she fun is. person. And that's, yeah. Um, okay. To, we'll get, we'll dance around everything, but Salt Lake <laughs> wrapped up its season last night. If you want to call it a season. Exactly. And you were on, you were on at the beginning of this season and we were talking Beverly Hills and stuff like that. But I really had high hopes. What did you guys think overall of the season? I thought it fucking sucked. I thought <laughs> Meredith, her, um, her extra work, um, yeah. we can do without it. <laughs> okay. Like she, I don't know when she got into like the extras union, but she's, she's clearly like trying to get her three vouchers so she can right. get the SAG. I mean, like just, I, she, is so lame and like we're, then, we're Lisa Barlow stands. So yeah. um Lisa, I don't know what you <laughs> think you're doing, but Brooks is gonna be showing us sweatpants <laughs> soon. <laughs> and we all need to rally around. <laughs> Um, no, that's, she has that. she has this kind of stroke way to try yeah. to talk with this stroke. It's like a stroke thing. I mean. There's always like a step and I are gonna take a planner after I brutalize my family. I don't want to do it. Seth, oh. Seth's like, I like tits. What's going on? I mean, oh, in Ohio, I I love Whitney's boobs. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fun guy. Fun guy. Um, fun creep perv. Crazy <laughs> fucking twat. I hate his guts. I can't Ryan. fuck it. Ryan. I can't Coming out strong. Ryan, you have to know. Really have strong. To know. Yeah, really strong. No, I can't stand him. We were cut out of On People's Couch where we watch TV for a living um, for a very, very small amount of money. Um, we would get cut out of full um, of Bravo episodes because of how much Julie hated certain <laughs> house husbands, housewives husbands. <laughs> And the one she no, hated so the funny. most, yeah, beyond like that's like that's her probably not job. Fun. It is my full time job. And so, um, her for her most, her top hated one for all of time was always Peter, Cynthia's ex husband. She'll still, I'm like Peter's not. He he little lurk sometimes. He was lurking on the Hate episodes with Nini, and we're just like guts. But now okay. Seth, Seth, but now Seth. Seth well, did you see Peter's back? Yes, on yeah. Potomac. Oh, who's, who's he oh, the, uh, case <laughs> adjourned. Exactly. <laughs> of course, he's on Potomac. <laughs> <adjourned>. <laughs> First, <laughs> fucking opportunity. 
yes. opportunistic piece of shit. Like I <laughs> can't not with him. Of course he's on. Of course he's on another show. Of course he is. And the way he grooms himself is like a backstreet boy. It's like all the, like everything is just perfectly groomed. The lines are there. It's always like a very shiny bald head. It's just, it really does, does way too much. Yeah. Way too much of the utmost. Ironically is what Angie's fucking husband, not Angie lips, Angie Harrington (laughs) on Salt Lake. The husband had his weird fucking beard all manicured. Did you see? No, Brian, this. This have noticed. Well, this, I feel like this is coming close to like what I look like is that dude. Right. So I'm like really no, very nervous. The top, no. the top of his mustache. Yes, he's doing like a this thing, like a like a KKK person. And I brought up Peter. Right. I was like, what's the top of his fucking beard like Peter? Yes. But anyway, the bottom line is this. Seth <laughs> passed over Peter now yes, for Julie. For me. And the level, <laughs> the level that she goes in on Seth, like, that this is her new, this is her side hustle is the, is the Seth hating the full-time job is hating all the husbands, but Seth has become the side hustle job because she, I've come to really like Whitney's husband. I think he's really supportive. Like, I actually, yeah, he's like, I've like come he's to like, like him. Um, obviously Lisa Barlow's husband is fine. I mean, he's a little, you know, he's a little Lance arms. Lance. Little Lance of, arms of, yeah. 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 The lips are a little blown out for me from the, he's only got one ball. He's, you yeah. know, doing his steroids. <laughs> a lot of high blood transfusions. <laughs> yeah. You can tell like, Dude, she was like all of a sudden fly fishing. She was fly fishing yeah. last week with him all of a sudden I, in a boob yeah. top. <laughs> I just, he like probably walks a canoe to the river and with one arm, rose it i don't know he's just a lot but whatever yeah. but he's not a mean guy or anything yeah. he's just you know what i mean but and Seth, he, he listens to lisa like dumb yeah shit. To drone on i yeah. I, I, I like a good such a good listener yeah <laughs> seth at the beginning of salt lake city seth and meredith were not even together they were like separated and clearly dating exactly. other people okay <laughs> seth is yes. in another town talking about some company he works for <laughs> where Can, canton ohio you know, i mean right. canton ohio come with me no <laughs> clean shaven clearly not a he's not it's not that he's it it he uh, he was and, definitely way uglier first season yes he's, he's, and then he's trying course, to like right come for like the oh, hot wow. Yes. So then I like, I like Brandy says he's better looking now. Brandy's like, he's really pulled it together. He is better looking now. Yeah, for sure. But that's what's annoying about him is and that he's trying to be all like the star. Ugh. They somehow together and they talked and Meredith also has her own makeover and then he's got a makeover. It's like they work together to come back into like, we let's use the show. Let's get our bodies together. We'll come together. We'll blah, blah, blah. And he took it so fucking far and I can't stand it Far from her, she looks like jennifer fucking garner <laughs> like she walked into the walk around live and she was like who's that jennifer garner i'm like i think that might be married <laughs> like what do you think do you think there's any chance in hell that he really is the boss of four thousand employees like no. i was like oh my god is this elon musk or is this no. elon musk all of a sudden like, there's no 4, way 000, Mary, you put you put four thousand employees jobs at risk i'm like where is he working that he's under, <laughs> yeah. like, and no. he always seems to be on the show so he i don't know where he's working yeah. Yes, I mean, exactly. sorry, Meredith, if you're listening. Yeah, exactly. But then, of course, then he has to go. But he I lost the plot and I will always lose the plot with any of these husbands. You want to fucking talk about another not only just another woman's, but another wife's boobs. And then we all need to think that's hilarious. And you're some fun loving guy as you and make they make a boob cake. They make a boob cake because it's so she his thing. The- she was so annoyed and was so sick of his bullshit talking about her tits. And you can say what you want about Whitney and her, she puts her boobs out, whatever, and fun, blah, blah, blah. But the I love Whitney. Her, yeah. And or you as in one. It's like the yeah. world is Not gonna you, yeah. It, the royal like, the royal world <laughs> like because he's the, he's not so threatening. He can fucking constantly grab grab hand her and talk about her fucking boobs all the time she had to make a cake and be like here's my boobs fuck up. Fuck, up. fuck all the way off and shut the fuck up you little fucking punk. oh he's a punk well let me ask oh, if I you watch the season you must have you must have really loved and especially if you're a fan of titanic seth and Meredith's bathtub scene where oh, she, he was like, you're, you're jamming your toe in my ass. Yeah, I, it was I very... love it, Seth. I love putting my toe <laughs> in my face. Like, and the, even that, like, 
I just, I, it makes it's me- not, Would you say it's a family that poses? Yeah, the family that poses. I was like, that was on the tip of my tongue the whole time. Like, we know, she 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 told us all the dirt. The motherfucker doesn't have 4,000 employees. I mean, and the family does pose. And Brooks is a bugger too, quite frankly. We can't really stand Brooks. I mean, Brooks did, when yeah, the, Brooks. the fashion show, he did 48 hours. Ahead. She's like, mom, I'm working on this and I only have 48 hours to do it. I'm like, well, maybe don't do it. If this is fashion, <laughs> like- it's not like America's Next Top Model. You should have done this months ago if you're like going to do put together a whole. I don't know how fashion works, but I don't think it's that way. I'm like, this is for mental health. Like, why don't you take some time and actually try to make a good product? And it all came together, of course. I don't know why they all sound like her. And it's just weird. The daughter, him, her, they all have that thing where they talk like that. And mom, it's like Xanax. It's like a Xanax her. family. It's Sorry. crazy. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, so, and she, he, when they did that to Jen Shaw and whatever with Jen Shaw, but when Matt um, Brooks was uh, so offended by her vagina, I just like, they're all just so pretentious and full of shit and fake. And I'm not going to have you say that some woman's vagina offended you. It's just, I can't, I just can't deal with it. It makes me feel. No, violent. it's. <laughs> that's why Lisa Barlow, like, I don't, ha- I don't have any hopes for Lisa and Meredith ever coming to terms with that because what she said was brutal, but that why it was brutal is because there was so much honesty in there yeah. and that's why you can't come you know it's like people kind of you can say lisa like man that is really rough stuff but you can't really argue with the content of what she was saying it was like no, oh you can't kind of there you can't and we all were like mm-hmm, she did fuck half of new york so we just, <laughs> but then at least knew all the, the too, you know but what else we saw it anymore. in the first season we yeah. saw it in the first season. She admitted to it. So why is it a big deal now? Like they did. We saw them have problems with the relationships. So take not pride in that, but like, yeah, that happened. So what? Also, Jen Shaw in that first season as well was rumored to have a boyfriend and that had gotten brought up. And now that got released in court documents or they tried to bring that up a couple of weeks ago about her crossing state lines to go like hurt the lady that he was like, she was like messing around with her husband. And that lady had sent text messages to Coach Shaw. And so she crossed state lines in 2019 to go like beat her ass and they had like that a restraining order put against Jen Shaw. But I, I just think it's so weird. It's like you mentioned these things in the first season. And now this season, all of a sudden it's like, let's not tell the truth about anything. Let's not, let's not even it, that's why they had to end it last night. It was so weird. The ending. It was so weird. Bizarre. It was so weird. Bizarre. As if, as if it's too Mar- and the thing for me with Jen Shaw, and it's all awful and it's whatever. But at the end of the day, particularly in these shows. For anyone to act like when particularly there are people who have done shady things, whether it be cheating or infidelity or whatever, right? Drugs, you mean drugs, drugs. they money launder, money, yeah, they, like taxes. What about Apollo? He scammed fucking a million people, right? In jail, he's back, right? <laughs> On show, he fired off of Bravo. Teresa's back, like the queen of, of New Jersey, we which love, we love we her, love Teresa, like, like, personally. yeah, you, you, the they scapegoat people to such an exploitive, grotesque extent and then discard them and then maybe she'll come back. But then all the people who are doing the exploiting are acting like they're angels. Like, and I don't know, it just, it, it bugs. It bu- it's not, it's not real. It, well, it's not real, but also it's just like, what a, what a messy season and to even just in terms of, from a production angle of like, you do 25 minutes as an opening, you do this choir that doesn't look like it's ever rehearsed a day oh, girl. at all. Girl, like, girl. Like, stop, stop, stop fucking lying to all. Like yeah. stop lying about everything on this season of everything. this show. Like everything you didn't rehearse. You did. It was so embarrassing everything. and cringeworthy. Heather Gay is all over the map in terms of like who she oh. is even anymore. Yeah, just like everybody has bad seasons of their life. Like I always say, but my God, she's like manipulate. Like she's like, girl, like I'll bring this up and I'll get them off your back. And I'm like, <laughs> stop self-producing. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, the choir, exactly. The, qu- the choir. You could see I it. Mean, they, uh, they, oh, yeah. to the, they, they, they insult the audience's intelligence. It's like, yes, we've, been, that's it. we act, we've been doing this too long. We, we, we can even see when something's the, the, even the producers are producing it besides just being fake. It's like, okay. Like I did believe that the producers made her drag that, that eye thing out to a certain extent, or at least, you know, the reveal of the eye. Like, I think, you know, that that's what's going around. She's now saying that the producers made Heather Gay 
Fucking- well, there was that rumor on Dewan. I don't know if I necessarily believe that because it's like, okay, so you're saying now the producers are going to make you take the fall for a bad, like they're trying to drag this out. But at the same time, okay, at the end of the day, we still want to know. At the end of the day, you have a show like this. This isn't an old timey radio show. You have cameras. You can actually tell us and show us. And these are things that were, they were on your watch too, Bravo. Like this happened there supposedly. So yeah. We kind of deserve to know if it's on, it's kind of like, that's on our time. Like we pay for this. Yeah. And you also dragged it out for three episodes and made us think that we we're all going to find out what it was. <laughs> then it wasn't anything. And the whole, and we never found out. Uh, uh, no, that we don't that's that she, they should go into prison longer than Jen Shaw should yeah. for that. I think right. that is, well, I said the judge, I, that the judge should offer Jen a lesser sentence just so she reveals the black guy thing. Just <laughs> yeah. like get a year off or something. Um, but like Heather kind of became like really insanely cringy for me because I was like, wow, yeah. she just has, I mean, talk about not having a moral center or just kind of just really like she was manhandling Whitney in most scenes. And Whitney oh, said, uh, I, I remember abuse from my childhood, which is a very intense thing. And yeah. Heather's like, get out of my way. Like it's <laughs> ridiculous. The ro- Heather, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I say this in with hyperbole, but the roids were roiding. Okay. <laughs> like, like I always imagine that the thing is that like, I, of all the housewives, if I were to be any housewife for Halloween, it would be. Yeah, we were going to do Whitney and, and Heather right. for, when they were in the lingerie. We call Whitney the sunburned slut, um, even though we love her. And we say that with love. We don't want her anymore. Right. <laughs> She's always- no, you should go with you should go as Heather and Jen. And one of you, the, whoever is Jen, you would have the Heather character in her ass, proverbially. So if you could do like a oh. like somebody on top of somebody, because yes. Heather is so far up Jen's ass, she's got like a condo in there. Is, Sorry, she is so far up Jen's ass. it is beyond that whole situation. But she did lose her moral center. And the yes. thing was, this she is what, this is what I think. And that she jumped the shark in that fucking um uh reunion. Uh, oh, when they all when she g- ganged up with Whitney yes. and they went on, they went to over Lisa. off on Lisa. Yeah. And she needed to be like, all she was up her own fucking ass about how Rihanna yes. D like posted about her on Instagram. And she just she was just like eating her, you know, eating her own. Rihanna's made plus. mistakes, too, by the way. I'll yeah. you want to say it. Rihanna has not been like Rihanna's made mistakes in the past. Like yeah. this is one of those mistakes. Yeah. I mean, Heather, I liked her the first season a lot and the second season part of it. But like, I'm just I, I'm so confused. Like she can abuse women. Whitney. She has no problem standing up to Whitney, but Jen, no way. No, no. Look at how much she's going through. Look at, I'm like, Whitney's actually uncovering deep traumatic abuse from her past. And that's just getting like, come on. I'm sorry. That doesn't mean anything. She's also flip-flopping with Lisa. She isn't being honest. She's pretending to be honest. Then she's not. She's gaslighting. She's making shit up. She isn't going all the way with things. She's then creating a thing where you know, come on. I don't want to do this. You can't make me do it. When she brought the thing up, like she's, she's being so manipulative and so she's so thirsty too. So Everything thirsty. Yeah. So thirsty. Well, and it isn't a good look and she has lost her, her center and she could find it again. I mean, you know, yes, we've all been there completely. She, 100%. But she, it's, it's so, it's she needs such to a bad look right now. Yeah. Do you think that yes. Bravo is going to sit them down or put them on fucking pause? If I hear that one more time, like, Oh, it's new, like, <laughs> yeah. It's the new- Andy calls him to the, Andy calls him to the clubhouse. You guys sit right here. I need to talk to you. And oh, no, I mean, I do think, I do wonder now that Jen will not be there. And by the way, that's why I think also, that's why the season I think ended early and it was so disjointed even last night's episode, because that, that issue with Jen is so big that it really dwar- like it really kind of monopolizes and holds the show hostage from all of these other ladies' actual life issues. Because at the end of the day, you're like, well, there's decades in prison, possibly. You can't stop thinking about that. And the show doesn't want to or can't handle that, answer anything honestly. We're not finding any new information. In fact, the producer's like, Jen, are you ready to tell us now? And then they just they end the season. They're like, okay, we're done. Like we don't get any new information from that. So there is no satisfaction from an audience's member for any of them. Cause all the storylines, we started off with Whitney excommunicating herself from the Mormon church. And that that was one episode and that's done. We never followed up on that. Lisa Barlow, even like the jazz tickets. Well, you're going to talk to any of the guys that she allegedly slept with for favors. You just put that rumor out there. Usually Bravo will drag that out. And start like trying to find people that have like been a part of it. Yeah. Uh, Melissa and they, Gordon, they, they randomly show up past. at like a, a charity event. Like, great. Exactly. Who, they always do that. Yeah. You're right. 
They dropped everything, every single thing. And they don't like each other. The cast doesn't even like each other enough to make it interesting for the audience. So next week when the reunion happens, we're going to have four people plus the Angies and probably some random bartenders that were on the season. Who knows? Just to fill space because Jen Shaw won't be there. But like Meredith and Lisa, they don't like each other. Obviously, Heather and Whitney don't like each other. So what are we going to really see out of this reunion? If they drag it out for more than two episodes, that's like a crime, just like Jen Shaw's crime. I mean, yeah, it's not they, we, we've been <laughs> reading that the reunion sucks. Yeah. Did, have you heard that? Yeah. I mean, well, how would it be good? Like all of a sudden, are they going to focus on something that we have no, like, Hey, when he's like, actually this year was a great year that uh, I climbed a mountain. And like, I mean, like, are we going to like here talk about things that weren't even on the show? That's the only way it could be long because I mean, everything even, on the show. Yeah. Even with Whitney, who dropped that bomb and that there was all of that stuff happened. We don't really know what happened. Like with her. Exactly. We don't know. We don't know. Every single thing is just a shell of a thing. It's all a shell of a thing. We don't know the abuse. We don't know about the eye. We don't even with Jen Shaw, Shaw. even with Jen Shaw, regardless of what she pled guilty to in whatever, we don't really know. We don't know any of it. We don't know what happened with coach. We don't know. We don't yeah, know. We didn't even know actually though, Ryan. So tell us about the state lines thing. So you're saying that. Well, that was something that the Southern uh, Southern district tried to uh, add to the case last week of like, yo, like um, we want to submit this too, because the, the lady that had filed the, um, uh, the, the police warrant and the, um, sorry, the, the restraining order the thing when you're the restraining order. Yeah. The lady that filed the restraining order, like contacted them because of Jen's behavior in this last and said, Hey, I just want to remind you that this is out there. And so they presented that in front of the judge and it, the judge was really lenient on a lot of things. What is, I don't know. What district of New York have such a fucking hard on for Jen Shaw. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like yeah. we're not, we're not obviously for scamming elderly people. And by the way, if they were like, most of the people well, 55, I'm yet. like, yeah. I'm like, you're pushing it. Like, <laughs> like that's not elderly. Like we're no. most of the people over 70 because 56 year olds know what they're fucking doing. Sorry that you, they clicked on your Facebook <laughs> ad that Jen Shaw put in oh, no. that QAnon <laughs> to fucking click on the ad. I don't care that QAnon <laughs> mother got scammed. Sorry. I don't get off Facebook. Oh, so basically Jen and Stewart put Facebook ads out to get you know, people who live on Facebook to click on it. And then they gave that list to a drug cartel sitting up in some, you know, building in New York that the Southern District of New York was like following think thinking it was like that it was drug money. They didn't understand what was happening in that building. And then for and maybe Jen Shaw was the one who rented that or leased the, the space they were in. Somehow it came back to Jen, but I don't, Jen was not the mastermind of that. They just gave I, I, a list of people. Not that well, I mean, that, that actually in the court, in the court documents, it does come pretty correct. Like it comes that she was very aware of the scam at yeah. a certain point, you know, and she was yeah. really, she was the top of that. But like the Stewart thing, like even last night, I think this is kind of like one of my last hurrahs with Jen, where I was like, man, even in this moment, you're still blaming like, oh, that Stewart dicked me over. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like that. Stewart dicked you over like all of a sudden he was the true mastermind yeah and he went up and picked your shit up and all of this stuff but it's secretly he was the one and like and at a certain point I'm like wow are you actually going to ever I truly in my head don't think she thinks that she did anything still like I think there's a real part of her that's like well listen I don't think I think it was just, I didn't realize it was illegal. I didn't realize, I think she tells herself these things. We saw that scene with her mother last night and her mother's like, you're innocent though, right? You're yeah, innocent. Yeah, and no, her mom had supposedly right. gave up her retirement right. fund. And like, like yeah. it's wild. Yeah. It is wild. I think what we, our issue is that um, the Southern District of New York, who clearly should be investigating and worried about Trump and they aren't. And who, you know, it's like, you're now going to put her in a familiar with him. Is that, yeah, who's put her in a federal and all of Trump's cronies and all of Trump's family um, and all of the people that are, you know, at the top of corporations who are scamming everyone, Elon but, Musk, which Jeff is, Bezos. you know, it's fine. <laughs> but these white collar criminals, you know, I, there's just got to be a better way. And now yeah. then, you know, Stu all the people involved, all the men probably get getting one year and Jen Shaw getting six. And it's just, I don't know. It's it's there's there's bigger fish to fry than that. Not that they should, of course, stop the scam. She should pay the victims back. It was wrong. She should take we're not saying that any of that was right. 
it's just like doesn't feel like at the I I I guess this is really sh- pro- and maybe also it's this is a thing of colliding worlds of politics yeah. and this and colliding. Yeah. I'm just saying that to the audience. We have a political podcast, so we deal with the anger of yes. of injustice. It's like so th- it's hard. But that's why it's so weird. Is that this does touch into all of, like housewives touches in touches into politics. Yeah. yeah, like it is it is expanded in terms of like what we're dealing with in America. It's a direct result even in Housewives, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Jen Shaw, I mean, I think this particular thing more than Teresa and Joe and more than Martha Stewart, let's say, <laughs> like like we're what we 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 literally are, are living through. We just finished the speaker, that whole speaker of the house debacle where they changed the committee rules, where they changed the rules where one person can give it, whatever, we won't get into it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we're going to investigate Hunter Biden's laptop, Joe Biden. We're going to investigate all this bullshit and the weaponization of the FBI. Meanwhile, we're going to take this woman who did a fraud thing with just with money and we're going to put her in prison for six and a half years while all this other stuff is going on and is bullshit. We're going to now do that. I know for me, it reeks of hypocrisy. It reeks of the, the, the problem with our prison system. It reeks with the problem of sexism. Mm -hmm. It is all of the things colliding. And she is like this figurehead of, we're not saying she did something right. And she isn't innocent. But no. does the punishment fit the crime? And why are we only choosing crimes that certain women do that they go to prison for while full fucking crime families are not in jail? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I agree with that aspect of it, but I would like to investigate Jen Shaw's laptop as well. No, I mean, listen, I think. 6.5 years is still, and that's considered a good sentence from what she could have gotten because yeah. it was so much more intense. But I was also just shocked that she's agreed to like 9 million in restitution um, and she's going to start paying off 6 million of it, but 6.5 has already been forfeited. So they had squirreled some money away. If you already have 6.5 million ready to go, that must have been kind of, well, I find it interesting. And last night it got brought up in terms of Coach Shaw. And if you had read the court documents, there are text messages to Stewart from Jen going, coach will coach us through what to say to the F, like what to say to them, what to say to them. Mm -hmm. So it kind of showed that coach was aware at a certain point of what was happening and he was going to, kind of coach Help. them in the right ways to answer. Right. Right. So what, what, what didn't, he, what didn't he know? Or like, do you- I mean, that's really yet to be determined. And I don't think, but interesting if, you know, you think about it from a male perspective, I don't think they're going to even touch him. Like, I think they're like, okay, we got Jen. That's good. And almost kind of like, uh, I think that was the idea that was brought up last night. Kind of like, well, Jen's the sacrificial lamb for that family and she'll go. And I mean, like with Teresa, we saw Teresa and Joe both serve sentences, one on top of the other, but not at the same time. But I don't see them making any kind of inroads at coach. And I think at this point, this I think there's one more case to go in this, but they kind of put it to bed with Jen. Right. I want to what? Oh, God, that I wanted to know. Um, oh, I forgot my question. It was. I'll think of it. I, I, I like have so much shit. I want to ask you because you read all the documents. Well, what did you think? What did you think about the, them going and like the changing of the plea, but to have Heather and Meredith, I mean, obviously this is a planned trip uh, that Bravo pays for that. Uh, you know, they're, they're filming them out to, to, to film. They have a crew there. Um, and I, I do find it funny now that now is Jen is proudly rocking the Brooks Marks outfits. She's like, yeah, oh. like, she, she, like show oh, some of like, them. I've always loved his, I always loved his designs. And like Meredith there is like in that conversation with Seth, Meredith's like, I have a real problem if she yeah. knows she's guilty and she's right. innocent. Where Heather doesn't even seem like Heather's just like, I I love Jen regardless. Um, how did you feel like they handled that whole scenario as a show. Like, I just felt like it was like kind of glommed on to the season finale. Terrible, horrendous season finale. (laughs) One of the worst ever. 
in the yeah, history yeah. of Housewives. It was it was one of the worst seasons of any Housewives franchise in the franchise ever. But then then you top it off with that garbage finale, weirdly put together that stupid fake ending like three <laughs> months later. And it's like, what? Why? Just figure out a way to edit it together or make it two more episodes or something or lose the stupid yeah. book party. Who gives a shit? Like, I don't know. Oh, you didn't you didn't want to see the cover of that book that didn't inspire you to a go read that book cover <laughs> reveal party. I mean, we have finally gotten just <laughs> and, you dread. know, she hadn't even come close to finishing that book. Like, I have a feeling that book was really, really behind schedule. Oh, I'm um, sure. Yeah, I'm glad they have a book cover, though. That's good. And she feels that the book cover is so I you know what? I thought that that, that, that was tragic that they flew flew them out there. They when like they're and they're hugging and it's like, and then Bravo immediately fired her. That was th- that's yeah. the other thing that that's like Julie's talking about. Well, how- according, wait, wait, according to the trial, Jen Shaw said in court on Friday that she is still a member of the cast of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And the judge said still. And she said still. So I don't know what that means. My thought was like, does that mean she is definitely doing the one-on-one with Andy? Does that mean, what does that mean exactly? Does that mean next season they're going to rush filming and we're going to see her go to prison like we did with Teresa? Like, what what does that mean exactly? Well, how come she wasn't on the reunion then? She's not on the reunion. Because I think she... She was supposed to be at the reunion, but then that week was when that thing came up about the restraining order, literally like two days before the reunion. And I even theorized, I was like, wow, this came out. I have a feeling she might not want to go to the reunion now. Like it was just all too intense. And also I think it's like kind of the impossible thing of how do you have Jen Shaw at the reunion and get answers for stuff that she's not going to be able to answer. Yeah. And there's not enough, there's not enough storyline otherwise you know, so you get the bit like, oh, I'm sure you're feeling very bad right now. Like it, it's a real it's put the show in kind of an insane position where I just don't think any of it's going to be good. I heard some bizarre rumor that I guess was just a rumor about that. They wouldn't let her into BravoCon and that she they had all the housewives in this. Oh, hotel. yeah. So if she would be allowed to <laughs> BravoCon, is- if she was still a member of the cast. Right. I think they've gone back and forth with her a couple of times. So that is true. She was not, she was asked, she was not invited to BravoCon, but Jen Shaw snuck into the Friday party oh, and I was yeah. there. And all of a sudden, oh my God. like Emily D. Baker, the lawyer grabs me and goes, you need to come over here right now and took me to the other end of like the party. And I was like, I was lit. I was like having the best time. And all of a sudden, Jen Shaw's like popping and locking. She's like oh. down on the floor. She's dancing with Sheree Wetfield. And she's like, yeah. yeah. Oh. And I was like, I, first off, I was just jealous of her knees. Like her knees seemed like they can support her body. Like my knee would give out immediately. She was like doing drops, like dropping it like it's hot. It was in. I was like, this can't be real. This is insane. So she snuck into the party, was having a blast. And then supposedly, listen, I don't really trust Tamara Barney either, but Tamara, she like, I guess, barged into Tamara's room with Heather. And then Tamara was like, and she was saying that no, she's no longer going to prison and saying all this stuff. And Tamara brought that up at the next day at the Ultimate Girls Trip panel. And Heather Gay was on that panel. And you can tell Heather was pissed. Tamara brought that up. And then Tamara went on to say that Jen Shaw stole liquor bottles from not unlike you at Leah's party. Um, right. You stole liquor bottles. And so I was like, you can't trust Tamara with any kind of information. And so like, she'll use it immediately. But to watch Jen Shaw, I mean, she was truly joyful on that dance floor. I mean, Ugh, I'm so jealous you got to see that. God, like, I think she. I, I have I, pictures I, I can I, I can show you. I have video. I was like, no way, this is oh, insane, that's amazing. Bravo put out a statement that 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 she had been that hurt she that she'd been terminated from yeah, Bravo. Right. I thought. I mean, right? Well, Andy had said. Okay. Andy said at the Ask Andy panel was like, okay, you know, after. She had changed her plea. We didn't really see what where we could go with that. He's like it was like very kind of worded in a but very you didn't interesting see where way. Where you could go with that? I mean, that is just. Well, like- he said he said once she because I have a feeling she lied to Bravo and lied to about because she got to proclaim her well, innocence follow- of the entire season. Yeah, right. So maybe follow follow a liar, see what happens. I mean, I feel like if you want to do reality TV and you want to do it. We have also, by the way, we're bitter about Bravo too. Yeah, I mean, we have have a thing with Bravo. That's true. That's why we don't. Why we don't want to start watching all this shit, Ryan. We only start watching. No, I know, I know. I, I I make. I'm so sorry that I make you come on here and talk about. I know. I, I appreciate it. 
you guys throwing yourself into the foxhole like this, but <laughs> it, it's one of those, it's one of those, we, I don't know, the Jen Shaw stuff just bums me out on so many levels. Like yeah. the, it kind of shows the weaknesses of the show. It shows the weaknesses of these kind of franchises. Yeah. It shows the weaknesses of female friendships when there's not any, like yeah. it's not even, the thing is the funny thing with Jen, I keep telling the audience, I was like, it's not even like she ends up looking good in these seasons, which you would think would be impossible. You would think, wow, somebody up on that many charges that change your plea. But she ends up looking better because everybody around her seems to be even worse in certain ways. Like they seem to be yes. even more insane. And that's what <laughs> like kind of boggles me is that every like the last two seasons I go, man, what a mistake for Jen to go on this season. And then each season I'm like, well, she actually kind of survived that. Mary Cosby really looked insane or like, you know, yes. <laughs> by default, she by default, she looks sane. Well, why not? That's the thing. If it's showing it making it's making everyone else look terrible because everyone else looks like hypocrites and everyone else looks like bullies and bad guys. And you turn your back on someone when they're when they're down, even when if it's your friend, if it's your own kid, if your own kid killed someone, parents have to rally around and still love their murdering <laughs> fucking son we'll do that i yeah. that idaho murders that just happened the mom they, the family released a statement saying we cannot believe our son did this like we 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 can't allow ourselves to believe our son did this yeah. we hope for like justice for the families and we are anxious to see what happens in the trial but we cannot as his parent believe that it, you know it was almost we can't believe that yet but right. it's like yeah you that's their their son they, right. they can't believe that yeah so i would think that for a reality show that has been so played out, that is so produced, that is so fucking lame at this point. You have something so <laughs> real and so powerful, whether it's good or and bad. And they fumble the bag. They fumble yeah, they it. They fumble the bag yeah. and they fired the best thing that ever happened to them. And I mean that in the sense of we could potentially have something that shows some, um, let's show the hypocrisy. And let's show let's the art, show a story arc too. A true, can, like, a and you show arc. hypocrisy. But can you show that if Jen is going to continually hold on to a narrative that essentially, no matter even if you think okay. the jailing is like is untrue, yeah. you know? OK, yeah. well, let's say we don't well, we don't know. That's the thing. So if you can hold on and follow her, I would believe my belief is that if she's going to go to actual prison, which I think is ridiculous, <laughs> that I think there's lots of other ways to punish that person. Uh, but okay, she's gonna go to prison. She can be on this show what? for ten hey, more years. She goes to one year. It was on fucking house arrest with the snake skin jacket. Exactly, or whatever. exactly. What was that guy's name and the Trump tax Paul guy. For, right, and the Trump Paul tax arrest. guy is only going for three months. So yeah, uh, Weisselberg. Yeah, Weisselberg is three months, and this woman's going yeah. for six and a half years. Just get into it. So <laughs> why don't we? Let's say she goes for a year. Let's say let's say she goes for a year. A year that's nothing in TV. You can have, I'm quite sure since it's a federal prison, you could have at least audio hooked up to her. I'm sure you can meet with her once a week. Teresa I'm sure you could have- No, Teresa was off for you. A, to a talking head through that prison glass would be insanely amazing. Oh, like iconic. The first iconic. Time ever. iconic. And you don't think that that person in prison for one year will change at all? You don't think that- Even just her face, right. Even just her face. Her face work? I can't wait for it well, to that, all- That's what I'm saying. It's gonna, we're going to see what that happens. But like, Julie, it's like that. that is so- kind of dead on because you could have people visit you could have merit you could do scenes through the prison glass yes, and then fire. like i mean it would and also what if we did a deal where every dollar she made on that went directly to her restitution Perfect. so it's like she's able to give money back to the victims like i mean that would that would actually be an interesting take on all of this i just don't know how you even if you're not going to have jen back which i think you can't like be middle of the road. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. So I think they no. either need to keep on keep her and like do figure out a way to do it through prison with calls and stuff like that. Or they need to start figuring out what the F they have because the ladies that remain, I mean that the Angie's, None of them are like, they're okay. Dana, she got her one line that was actually good in the trailer cut last night. It was supposed to be in there of like, you better watch how you talk to me or I won't put money on your books. That was in the trailer. It got cut from last night's episode. Also the Meredith uh, combating Whitney saying that like, I noticed it's always you bringing up the problems. That scene got cut from last night too. Those were two like decent scenes that all of a sudden we don't see at all because they've edited them out, but left them in the preview. 
I don't, it I, completely fumbled the ball in every way. And it's, it's it, like, it's, I, I mean, we're hearing that it, that, that it's done. I mean, at least for next season, at least I heard that rumor. That they were, yeah. I don't, I still, I still think at the end of the day, if they're going to be this lazy about this season, then they're going to be like, they'll, they're going to keep it going. Cause at the end of the day, it's not a huge, the ratings kind of suck, but it still makes ad revenue. So they're not usually in the habit. Like that's a big, that's a, a franchise they launch successfully. So I think there's investment in that in the sense that they won't, they won't do what they did to, to Dallas. I don't think, but who knows? I mean, this is really bad. So they did it I'm Miami. Really curious. Yeah. They took Miami off after three years. Right. Originally. Right. And by the way, by the way, really great decision in retrospect because they came back and they were all friends. And like, I mean, I think this season of Miami just kicks ass. Like it's really good. We haven't seen it. Yeah, we don't. Uh, I, know, I know. I know. Yeah. 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 I, okay. So uh, yeah, yeah, I know I you. I know you the guys. only way I think that they could save Salt Lake city at this point would be since they're going to get rid of Jen is they need to, they need to get like some rich sister wives to get into the, to the fold, get some. Thank you. Thank some, you for giving me that opening because I wait, need, that was wait, the, I what just, I want. I want to ask you, why did the half the, like it, another shady thing is just that the, the, a lot of the money has to go to the government, right? She has to pay however much money. And it said yeah. a, a million dollar amount to the government. And then the other millions, like, 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 what are you doing? Oh, is it taxes? <laughs> it they didn't be. say, so it's taxes. It must be. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's tax because be tax. there's also, I mean, they didn't, she wasn't charged with this, but there is tax fraud too. So, uh, there, that is like restitution as well on top of that, okay. but it came out today in court paperwork that she only has to, and this is, I believe after she's out of prison, uh, her wages, whatever wages they may be, will be garnished by 15%, which is not bad. Like, I mean, uh, bad. she can keep, horrible. you know, like 15%. Yeah. But coach made $721,000 last year at his coaching job. Like that's a oh, lot wow. of money, $721,000. So will his <laughs> shit get garnished too? No, I don't think it will. Well, I mean that I actually, I can't say that. I don't know that for sure, but I would, I would think so. Or at least I would think coach would give it willingly if they are united front, you but they've got so much expenses and yeah. what's that? you think he's going to, they're going to break up. I don't, I mean, ugh six years or whatever, it's going to be a long time. And also I had somebody from Danbury prison come on the podcast last month. And she was talking about like, she got a girlfriend in prison. She got like, she I didn't love it, but she made some of the closest friends of her life. They had birthday parties. Like they, you know, life finds a way. Like she had, they were able to lay out if the COs were nice, you know, like she, so she, uh, get made massages. This face. she really nice that she'd get massages. She did yoga. She got all her body all good in prison. Oh, she said if she wasn't bragging about it, she wasn't like, oh, it's a party, but she said, listen, it's like horribly depressing, but you do, you know, like you have a TV in the common room, you have to agree with what to watch, but like, you know, we threw birthday parties for each other. I'm still in contact with everybody. You know, there's one computer, they read your emails, but you still get to be on it. And I was like, if you, if they get a lot, like, if you get a computer in your cell, I'll fucking kill somebody tomorrow. Like, yeah. I'm, it's like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, that's all I watch. want is to read. Yes. Sorry. Oh, but you said sister wives is casting. And I know I just have a little bit, uh, a couple more minutes with you guys, but I wanted to bring, I'm so fascinated with sister wives in the last couple of seasons. I had, they have 17 seasons and I just started watching it like two and a half seasons ago. Why do you think Cody's like the best man of the year? Right, Julie, <laughs> you, you first. <laughs> uh, when did you say you started watching it two seasons ago? Like about two and a half seasons ago. Okay. We've been watching like, Sister Wives um, from the beginning. Uh huh. So, whoa, you watch all 17 seasons? So, we're deep in the Sister Wives game. And pre Robin. I pre Robin, when we watched Robin get in, which also, by the way, uh, you, wait, was, you mean, bra you mean browse? <laughs> yes, browse, browse, browse. So, listen, how about Christine and Janelle as Salt Lake City, New Housewives? Anyway, uh, I love, I'm so happy Christine and Janelle are out and Mary yeah. this week made the announcement, but I mean, Cody's like been very open with like, yeah. I don't even like that one, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, I think that, that, that show, first of all, I don't even know where to begin. So I would say, first of all, I think that the last, this last season, the, one of the, the, the episode that Cody and Christine sat with each other in the library and talked out. <laughs> their, their yes. And um, we saw the light going down in this yeah, window just, in the background. Just, you guys, it was 
It was the most intense episode ever because we just uh, flat talking. I loved it. It was Emmy award winning. It really, I, I really, really think it's one of the best te- moments of television and so in reality TV and history. They did it with anyway. their own equipment, That's their right. own camera, their own sound. Yes, Matt, was, the, you're doing too much. Fucking bravo. Yes. You're doing too much. They set up their GoPros and sat there. It's yeah. just relationship. Yeah. Yes. Relationship. Yeah. It was riveting. It was riveting. And it was everything we wanted her to say and it was everything we knew he'd say <laughs> and he pretended he was the thing for for me in the entirety of the entire series is that all of them maybe except Janelle who actually I think would have been content to continue on if things had stayed status quo but for the most part I believe that those women and him were deluding themselves from the beginning they were living in a in a house of cards that they had been dealt from their families and their religion. And they didn't understand going into it, the feelings that a human being has when (laughs) in, in an intimate relationship with other people. And when your own worth is degraded systematically and you don't even realize it until you wake up and realize, wow, I feel worthless. And I think that's what, happened to Christine, what happened to Janelle, and what happened to Mary. And Cody, on the other hand, spent his eternity thinking he was the head of the family. This is what men do. This is what our religions say. I'm the fucking father. I have to have all these kids. And love is multiplied, not divided. But in fact, love is a specific (laughs) and it's intimate and it isn't about loyalty and respect to you because you're not a fucking god so he really fell apart in the same way everybody fell apart because his whole world was just his whole idea of reality was destroyed in a similar way theirs was but his was different because his was so narcissistic and he's exploding and his ego is he's going in such a different direction than them, which are experiencing freedom. And I want to, you know, t- to feel valid and wor- worthwhile and love and intimacy and blah, blah, blah. While he's, he's lost the fucking plot. He has lost he's, the plot. Even his tendrils of hair want to get away from him. Like there's those oh, tendrils that yeah. are like come down. It They're is like. to go back and then. <laughs> On the like, <laughs> I will sometimes just days off watching his tendrils on the reunion, like just kind of flip. And then it'll be like, gosh, darn, you don't even understand me. Like he throws yeah. actual fits. Like, and all the, all the, all the women are just like, okay, Cody. Okay. And they, they're like <laughs> calm completely. And he'll be like, you don't understand what it's like to be a man. And <laughs> right. Then he said, right. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's but it's really dark because you know you guys i try to explain my love of the show and it's like it's like what you said it's like these it doesn't take much you don't need fancy locations like the reunion is like a pier one imports they're using like a bed set from like pier one like it's ridiculously under i want to see you guys host that reunion like i want to see that like and but cody even tried to hug the the reunion uh interviewer and she just went in for the handshake and he was like okay okay He's reverting yeah, so he's, it's, hard. It's like his, his, core. his inner child is like coming out. What's interesting yes. having watched it from the beginning. This to me, the saddest part about it, I, we always watch it with Julie the whole time. So it's interesting. The show's been on for like, ten, like I don't know, 10 years or something. It's a million yeah. seasons, but it's, I think, t- 10 years. I may, it might be a little more than that. But Julie couldn't take, of course, you know, at the concept at first because it's three women and one guy and she's <laughs> hit and it's a whole to do so it'd be like okay then we you know and she, her growth and her evolution through it i mean we've grown uh, grown older with them and it so it's been really interesting but it's, it's sad to me that he was even though they're they were faking it for the cameras they because they said in this this last thing that they were faking it you know what i mean they were having tr- trouble that whole time they were all in fighting but they were pretending for the cameras and they wanted the job he felt always loved and adored because he had 47 fucking loser kids that were little, but now all those little boys have turned into adults and he doesn't respect them and they hate him. And when he, yeah. and they want to get their pencil wet, just that's what he said in the last episode. He goes, yeah. they go out and get their pencils wet. And the, th- the whole thing with coronavirus, I mean, again, now we've got politics intersecting with the show and it was, and it was so, it's so sad to watch yeah. for me 
with my daddy issues to watch these million kids that he insisted on having. He only wants to be around the young ones. Did you notice that, Ryan? Like, yeah. he, he goes, the young ones, if something, if something happened to the young ones, like all of a sudden he's like Noah and he's like, I've got the young ones. I've got animals. You guys are <laughs> exactly. good. It's like wild. Yeah, I would hate to like, be one of the older kids because yeah. it seems like he does not care. Yeah, he only wants to be around the little ones because they sit there and revere him and look up to him. And now that he has grown men that he insisted on having 20 million kids, he certainly doesn't care about Mary and her one daughter. And it's like and the, the daughter is, 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 a, <laughs> is a trans man oh, now. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was like, and I'm sure that kid, th that little, you know, kid who is an adult now. I mean, sh she was a little girl. You know what I mean? She's an adult now, of course, because she's sitting there like all they care about is men and that stupid fucking religion. But anyway, OK, right. Who cares? Exactly, Basically, exactly. it's sad for me to <laughs> watch him be a terrible, terrible father yeah. to these grown children. Yeah. And that saddest thing I have, uh, honestly, besides that scene, that intense scene in the in the room between Cody and Christine, one of the saddest things I've ever, ever seen on reality TV was that that young boy he's like an older son now cry because his dad called him and forgot his birthday remember did yeah. you yeah oh my god from this season you guys it was so insane he's like yeah dad called later and uh you know like it was it was he so sad he's like hey yeah what happened when you got covid man i've got covid and the the kids are waiting for him to say happy birthday and he never did and it's just like and he and he's like and he then he says I haven't talked to my dad since he couldn't even get it out. He says, I haven't talked to my dad since that day. And it was like months and months and months. He doesn't care about the, he never let anybody in the family see each other because of Corona. Cause of the, what does he call them? The guidelines or he was right. the stipulation. Right. Whatever. The F, whatever. And by the way, I'm all for yeah. people taking like COVID seriously, but like, even like, uh, uh, Janelle said, like we follow the CDC guidelines, like that right. should be enough. But Cody was on a whole different, all different, different page all about different. that. Did and you said, guys like Robin when he, she was introduced to the show? Because I didn't see when she was introduced. Did you know uh, she was going to have brow issues in the future? <laughs> well, yes, we did. <laughs> she came in with the brow issues. Um, I don't know. We didn't really like her. Did you her. feel bad that she said? Did you feel bad this week? Did you like, it was taken away from me. The sister wife's life. It was uh, taken the, away. The show. <laughs> 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 No, I we, didn't. We, we did didn't not like feel her. bad for her. No, no, we didn't like and her from the beginning. No, really. no, she came in. She just came in a little too hot. She yeah, came in a yeah. little too hot and it was just a little the whole thing. And and clearly and the Janelle and Christine and Mary all felt she came in too hot, too. And they all knew they all knew they all knew they all knew they all knew. So, oh, oh, the, the kids thing is so sad. It is so well, they are filming for a new season, so I'm curious where it goes. New, from I wonder he, if he'll get a new wife. He said on this, what I thought, I thought this, whatever it's called, tell all or whatever. It's like it's not a reunion. We'd love to see them all. They're not even in the same room. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, so they, it was really illuminating because one with Robin when she said he was trying to protect our jobs, and it's like, what jobs? So that's the TV <laughs> show. Yeah. Um, we knew when he was throwing his fit, a lot of his fits. The undercurrent, which it's like we're used to this on Housewives, where the, the the thing not being said is that we're all on a TV show. Like, you know, you talk around the TV show, but that was I felt like that was a 75 percent of it for them. Robin and Cody is they're mad. Christine's leaving because it, de it jeopardizes the TV show. Right. So now Janelle has left and he's on this re on this tell all talking about how he wants to get back with Janelle and like prepare things with Janelle. So I think that that's either they either Janelle and, and them planned it because mm. I wouldn't put it past because uh. Janelle is very like brass tacks. I know her kids hate him and she's with, on her kid's side and she's sick of him. But even if they didn't plan it, Cody, that's going to be the storyline is him trying to get Janelle. But also the relationship with, with, with Janelle and Christine is so strong that I think, I think they're leaning on each other and like positive things have happened in their life where I really don't force the, that. I mean, I think when they're out, like you immediately see good things happen in your life. And like, it would be right. almost like, but she did say she like, you know, part of the tenets of her religion does believe in marriage. And there is that kind of question of like, am I forsaking? Like I hate Cody so much, but do I want to go to hell? You know, like if you believe <laughs> in that, 
That's, right. you know, that's one of the things of like, and then she's like, and I decided I do. I, I hate <laughs> Toby that much. I'll go down. She'll get remarried. She'll get remarried. I give her two years tops. And I think that she'll be remarried. Christine, for sure. <sighs> Janelle, ugh, maybe, I don't know. And I hope that for Cody, my, my hope for him is that he just focus on Robin and or come out as gay. Cause that could also be a possibility. Dude, that would be all. Dude, that would be so awesome in so in many dark. ways. Oh. Uh, Sorry, I yeah. just realized, are we in no, the dark? Yeah. Again? Oh my God, should yeah, I? Yeah, it was all, but I just figured the sun was going down. Should I, so it's going like, down. Okay, no, <laughs> should I no, put a light no, on? No, no, we're almost done. Okay. This is podcasting by candlelight, you guys. This is how the settlers used to <laughs> like, podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm so excited you were watching from the beginning. Damn. Wait, do you guys talk about this on your Patreon? No, no, we don't. We don't. Oh, you guys just watch this for enjoyment? Oh my <laughs> yes. god, I would kill. Yeah, I would kill to have you guys do a sister wives podcast. Are you kidding me? Well, um, right now, did you ever like Cody? You know, yeah. there was yeah, there were times when when he yeah, and I thought he looked low key hot last season. Yeah, like or he's the never beginning. Just, of, yeah, the beginning just chill of with the part. drinking a little bit, Brandy. Just, <laughs> just, just, enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> the tendrils might be trying to get away, but he's definitely he's in shape. He looks like he's young. His, he's he left the, he shaved his side. <laughs> he looks good, and the sides were gray, and the blonde was so aggressive. It was the beginning of the season that he looked hot, and I was like, I'm like, is he kind of look? He's doing like a weird, <laughs> like kind of like. And Julie was like, Yeah, he does. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they all need to go into therapy they need to do work on themselves this is what i would say it's like you gotta go to therapy you gotta do work on yourself you need to really analyze it's like the religion fucks you over so fucking hard and that religion yeah oh so fucking misogynistic and those everybody's gets fucked up the men are fucked up the women are fucked up you need to go figure your life out and have you know, it's like he doesn't care about love. He only cares about respect and loyalty. Like, what kind of life is that? He's he's yeah. He's, going to the going to the Marines or something if you right. want respect and loyalty. Yeah, you have forty seven thousand kids like, take care who of are kids. desperate to love you, For love, and yeah. you are denying them. And you have a wife who you like, I guess, and love. So just there you go. You've got it all, but you're denying all of it because you're so. Re, like repressed and and arrested development yeah, this, he goes he goes i'm looking i'm looking back on life a lot now I, I used to just be looking forward but now i look back and i'm like oh old man cody looking back at, you know <laughs> like you know like, play a neil young song cody like yeah. um yeah. okay uh, you guys right. i've taken enough of you i've taken enough of your time um, I'm hoping to be on your podcast next week, hopefully. Um, yes. but you guys, dumb gay politics is the podcast, their Patreon, which I, they need to do sister wise, but their Patreon <laughs> is awesome as well. You can find all of the information that you want about them at julianbrandy.com. Would you guys do a live show with me at coyote pass? If I can get the permits would, uh, we yes. should build a live show on coyote pass. Yeah. Yes. Like yes. A, like a, Are you kidding me? Or something? Uh, yes, how, we would. Yeah. How far is that from your Arizona? Yeah. Your parents. It's, like, it it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed to be like four hours, I think. Which is because I, this, this holiday, this Christmas, I was like, should, would it be weird if I drove out to Coyote Pass for a picture? And I was like, oh, but God. I bet Cody's like always watch. I was like, that's how I die is Cody shoots me on Coyote Pass. Yeah. And it was like, I died doing what I love, getting weird pictures of that reality is. stuff. He'd you know? be probably, he'd be so nice. I bet. Yeah. I bet he would be how too. How far is it from your parents' house? I think it's like four hours. Oh, four hours. Why? Because isn't it in Arizona? Yeah. But remember, like you got... <laughs> The it's all spread out. Like it's, <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll explain maps later, but it's like okay. really, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> also, wait, wait, uh, just one word, Lisa Rinna, happy or sad that she's gone. Uh, loaded. That's a hard it's one. Kind of loaded. She definitely entertaining. <laughs> I mean, she's entertaining. We were, but we, we love Kathy. We were on Kathy Hilton's side, but we. But a good run. She had a great run and she'll, she'll be, be back. back eventually. She'll yeah, be back. exactly. Yeah, yeah, she'll they be all back. Come back, they all except come back. for Nini, and that's who needs to be the first one back. Yeah, we're so mad at Bravo. It's not even funny. Sure. Yeah. He's, I mean, that bur that bridge is so burned. There, if Nini comes back, that would truly be really special. I just don't think that's going to be ever possible at this point. But it would be really awesome if it did. Yeah, there's. It should never be. Um, you know, they should be worried about burning the bridge with her. 
they chewed her up and spit her out just like they do with every single person. And they just want every show to be below deck so they can bring on people, catch them with drugs on the boat, ruin their lives and then recast the next season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are, by the way, we are married to medicine fans and I did. Phaedra read- is coming back. Phaedra is going to not coming back. Phaedra is going to be on next season. <laughs> Wait, oh my God. Yeah. Yes. They, so, Carlos King announced it yesterday. Yeah. Yes. So That's very so excited funny. about that because we yes. live and love, you, live and love for Married to Medicine. And you're on official cast members yourself. So like this is yes, huge for right. you guys. This is huge. Yes. Um, yeah. We're friends. I love We're you, friends. you guys like so much. Thank you. Th- thank you so much for being here again. Thank you're you. just my favorite guest, but thank you. And I hope to be on your show next week. And guys, cool. go subscribe to I'm Gay Politics. Uh, they they talk about politics, but in a really fun way and shows how insane the world is. And you would be kind of ignorant if you didn't pay attention to the political landscape nowadays. So, okay. Uh, Brandy is uh, ducked under the day. Okay. Yeah, sorry, bye, guys. Wait, bye. Love you, Ryan. Bye, Ryan. Bye. bye.